When configuring DNS, sometimes you want to go from names to names or names IP addresses, and those are forward zones. Sometimes you want to go from an IP address back to the name and figure out which name is associated with an IP address. And those are reverse zones. So let's look at creating reverse zones. So we got my machine here. It already has a forward zone configured for my example.com domain. And now I want to create a reverse lookup zone. So I go to the etc directory and edit the named.conf file. So I need to tell it which zone I'm creating. Now at the bottom I have the example.com zone and now I'm going to add in the reverse lookup zone. So when you create zones, you have to tell it the name of the zone and you have to remember that the largest unit is always on the right hand side. So with example.com, the com is bigger than example. With reverse zones, it's also going to be the largest on the right hand side. So I'm going to create one for the 10.230.150 subnet. So I have to write it with the largest piece on the right hand side. So 10.230.150.0 slash 24 would be listed as 150.230.10. in adder arpa. So it's kind of backwards from what you'd normally expect to see. All right. Close that. And now I need to tell it information such as the type. So it's a, uh, it's a master as opposed to being a secondary. And the file name is once again going to be in data. And then I can name it whatever I want to name it. So I will keep it something easier for me to recognize and read. So I'll be about 10.230.150.zone. And that's all you need to do here in the name d.comp file. All right, now I'm going to go and create that file. So it's over in the var name d data directory. Well, it will be when I create it. I do nano 10.230.150.zone. All right, so I want to start out by giving a time to live three hours and then I'm going to tell it that my server, my name server once again is uh, the server.example.com and that should be handled in my forward zone. And now I create my SOA record. So in SOA and I'm going to basically just do my example. Um, put my email address as admin at with a dot and seven at example.com dot um, put in my serial number again which is 2017 and the month is 04 with a date of 20 and comment there and some more times and and get them all in there and once I have all of my dates times that I am ready to create the rest of my phone files. The SOA record is completed. Now I'm going to change my origin. Um, I use the origin command and I'm going to tell it I'm going to be doing the um, 150.230.10. in add 
origin. And now I can start adding addresses in there. So every address I put in here, I just need to put in the last octet and it will automatically put it in the 10.230.150 range. So my server was one and uh, in it's a PTR for pointer and server.example.com dot. And my client machine is at two SPTR client dot example dot com dot. And that is all I really need to do to make this work. So now I'm going to exit out, save it, and I'm going to restart my named service. And it works. Now I can use the dict command to check to make sure these things work. So I create a 10.230.150. Now I want to do some lookups. So I do a dig minus x 10.230.150.1. And it says that the dot one address right here points to server.example.com. The X means that it's going to automatically translate it into the correct format for me. And I can see the client machine is also right there. If I wanted to look it up, I can also look it up by the actual address. So I can do dig minus T P T R and the actual address of the client machine would be 2.150.230.1. 10 dot in adder dot arpa and look that up and I can see that's what it is right here the client machine same thing with the server I could just change that to a two but it's much easier if you just use the minus x option and then we can see what that works and I'm using my own server so we can see that the DNS is working. And that's how you create a reverse DNS zone.